When we talk about women in media ownership, we are referring to a very small number of about 8.1% of women who own or run media houses in Kenya. Today on Her Standards, we are privileged to have one such woman because honestly, we really want to understand why we have this, you know, these numbers and what it takes to thrive in this very challenging industry. My name is Queen Tambori and welcome to Her Standards. Now joining us today is uh, Carol Mandy. Ma Carol Mandy is a household name in the magazine publishing industry here in Kenya. And of course, she's the one behind products such as True Love, Drum, and there's this other one called uh, Home Living Magazines. Um, she has quite a story, and we're very excited to have her here. Remember, we are available on KTN Home across all socials, but you can also hit me up at Quintambori on the same platforms on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter. Drop a comment, tell us where you, you're watching us from, how your week has been, and of course we'll try as much as possible to get in touch with you. Tell us how your life is going. Is there any woman you feel need to take this particular position that my guest for today is taking? Do not hesitate to talk to us. Now allow me to introduce my guest for today and I'm talking about Carol Mandy herself in thank person. You. Thank you so much, Quinta. Thank you so much. How are you? I am well. Yeah. How are you? Fine. Yeah. I'm so excited to have you on Her Standards. I am so privileged to be here. Thank you. We have a long history that we do. people might not know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> huh? we, we have do. a long history, but I think maybe I would just touch on it a bit. When I came back from uh, Tanzania, uh, in 2014, I had a, a, a stint at, two, at uh, the True Love magazine and it was just amazing. And that's when I met Carol Mandy, but previously I'd actually been following you because you're, you're one of the people, honestly speaking, that I look up to. Thank you. Have I ever told you? That is so special. Thank I've you. I've never told no, you. <laughs> no, 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 that is so special. <laughs> and it's... that is why we have this show. Yeah. We set standards for women. Yeah. And I believe that you have set standards for women, especially in the magazine publishing industry. Thank How you. long has it been? Uh, since 2004, so we're looking, actually before 2004, because yeah. um, I've been in the publishing world for over 20 years, because I first started working on a magazine called Eve, yeah. which is now obviously a pullout in the, sta in the standard. Um, and we came up with the concept, I worked with uh, um, Mundia Mushiri back then to come up with the concept of the magazine called Eve. Yeah. And that was in uh, 2001, 2002. Um, so now it's about 20 years doing magazines. So it's been, it's been a long ride, but a wonderful, thrilling ride. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amazing. Um, what people think they know you, right? Yeah. Um, and and uh, people think that when you talk about uh, True Love magazine, the name that comes to mind, or the person that they see, on, is it always on page two? Yes. Where you have your editorial? Yes. It's Carol Mandy. Publisher's Note, exactly. yes. Exactly. Yeah. But what would be, be, people be surprised to find out about you? Um, that I'm a very private person, which is so interesting <laughs> because I'm in media. Um, and that I used to hate having my photo taken. And yet, every month, I would... In fact, the, the publishers used to be like, you know, go get your photo taken. Mm -hmm. But I'd be like, no, I don't want to sit and you know, take one hour to do my makeup and then get my photo taken. So sometimes my photos would go for a while, for like maybe six issues, same photo, and I'd be told, no, 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 you have to change your photo. That things like that are just very interesting. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's like an oxymoron mm -hmm. that I'm in the media industry, yet I'm a very private person, and, um, and that I don't enjoy that glitz um, necessarily but I do it because it's my job. Exactly. So those are just some of the things that are very, people would be, find very surprising. And that I'm an introvert, you know, um, yet in a very public um, space. I'm, I'm having a hard time. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I remember when I did my first uh, uh, personality assessment yeah. um, in 2000, because I could never understand myself. I did this test, and it, it kept showing up, introvert. I didn't believe it myself because I consistently show up in very extroverted spaces. But, you know, it just, I just said there's something wrong with the test because there's no way I'm an introvert. Mm. 
But over time, I've done many, many others, and it keeps coming back. So it's, um, my job is very extroverted, but I draw my strength internally, and that's why I'm an introvert. I'd rather be at home with a book than out there at an event, but I go to the events because it's part of my job. And because I also love people, um, and I'm curious about people, so I find myself in an extroverted space. Mm. But really, honestly, if I could have a little house in the woods, doing nothing but writing, that's my dream, you know? Just being an author sitting somewhere and just playing with words, mm. yeah. All right, you talk about Carol Mandy, people associate you with true love. Yes. But unknown to them is that you actually have um, a media organization yes. yeah, yes. called Carol Mandy Media Limited, yes. Yes. which is behind uh, different publications and different events. Maybe you could tell us, briefly tell us about that. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, it's interesting because obviously True Love was the flagship or is the flagship of what we do. And it's a brand that has done phenomenally well in East Africa, yeah. but also you know, across the continent. Mm -hmm. uh, some people may not know that it's a continental brand. Mm -hmm. It's published in South Africa, East Africa. It was published in West Africa yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. So, and it's, it resonated very well with women. Um, however, mm -hmm. you know, that is just one demographic. There were so many other demographics. Um, and so drum fit another demographic. Mm -hmm. Home and living fit another demographic. Um, and so all these brands came together because I think the, the challenging thing for me, whereas I started with True Love and it was a success, was not to sit on yesterday's success. Um, and so it was always about what's the next mountain to climb. They say the bottom of one mountain, the top of one mountain, mountain is the bottom of another. Of another. Yeah. So what's the next mountain to climb? But how do you say, call yourself a media owner when you only, can only speak about one brand? and you need to spread yourself out. So we, did, we publish books, uh, we do digital content, we do uh, TV content. So that's why I needed to go into that entire space to see myself not just in one box, but as a real, you know, to come in fully into being what a media owner is. Mm -hmm. So not just to have one media, but to have several products um, different platforms, different demographics mm. that we were serving mm. at the same time. Mm. Yeah, I mean, talking about, uh, well, in my, in my introduction, we talked about 8.1% of women yes. running or owning media organizations yes, in yes, Kenya. Yes, yes, Which is, if you ask me, is a, is a sad state because yes. if you look at um, the demographics, women make up of actually more than 50% of this country's population. Yes, yes. But then now, what at what what happens? What happens? How do we end up uh, at eight eight point one percent? That means that about ninety one. If I got my mathematics right, that's ninety one point point nine. Eight point one. No, ninety one point nine. Yeah. The mathematics Don't in the house. It's, it's not mathing. <laughs> it's not mathing, but it's above ninety percent, which is huge. Yeah. And the comparison, honestly, doesn't quite make sense. Doesn't quite quite add up. Yes. On this show. What we do is we try to uplift uh, standards for women. We try yes. and set standards for women. What did it take for you to be in that 8.1%? Because if people are getting rewarded for that, you definitely deserve that award. How does it, how do you run a media, how do you find yourself at the helm of a media industry in this country, yeah. yeah. How do you fight those battles? Yes. How do you stay afloat? How do you stay? Yeah. Those are many questions, and they're <laughs> wonderful questions. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the things when I think about my personal journey, yeah. um, it's first and foremost I was in love with magazines from the time my mother read a lot of magazines from the time I was growing up. Yeah. So I grew up around magazines. Um, I'm a writer. My mother was a writer. My father was uh, a writer. Worked in in media. Um, and I followed him into Media Nation Media Group at the time. So I was always surrounded by media. Mm -hmm. And I loved just print. I loved glossy images. I loved the aspirational lifestyle. So getting in there was, um, I was going to find my way in there one way or the other. Um, and when you talk about there are very few women in media, oh. what does it take for a woman like me to make it here? Mm -hmm. I walked on the shoulders of other women who came before me. Oh. 
um, I've written a column in the Sunday Nation for over 20 years. Um, but that column was, before I wrote that column, there was a woman called Wangoi uh, Gashie, who was one of the first, if not the first, female columnist in a newspaper that just had men. I mean, like any columnist was a man. Every other column, every page you turned, it was a man. She was the only woman. And when I looked at her, I said, I want to be that woman. I want to own that space. I want to be in that space. So I fought to get into that space. Now there are so many women with the bylines. Mm -hmm. and, I'm, and I'm so grateful because back then it wasn't the case, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and then so people like Wangoi, who passed away, the late, paved the way for us. People like Rose Kimodo. Mm -hmm. I looked at what Rose was doing and I said, oh, look at what she's doing. Mm -hmm. She was my dream. You know, and I keep saying the same thing to her. I said, you know, if you hadn't done what you did with Ka Kameme, I wouldn't be here. So she paved the way because she was daring enough to believe that she could take on the big boys. And then don't even forget that media was largely foreign owned, you know. So it was um, the, the local shareholding. I mean, it, it, it was not Kenyan media. Kenyan media is a very recent phenomenon, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of, you know, citizen uh, uh, group and, you know, uh, the people daily. Those are very recent, mm -hmm. you know. So it, it was the big boys, but it was also the big external boys. Um, but then back to the other question that you ask, um, yes, you fight battles. Yeah. You fight battles when you're in the media space. It has become a lot more diverse now, and I'm so grateful. But um, I remember being in meetings where uh, you're one woman or one or two women, and the comments are very sexist. So you're in those meetings where people are talking about uh, women or you or looking at you not because of what you're doing um, or the work you're doing but because you're a woman so the comments are all about how you look you know and and all of that you know so there's being able I remember one time um, I used to wear pinstriped suits I wanted to camouflage the thing that I'm a woman because I wanted men yeah. to take me seriously yeah. Not the moment they meet you, they are trying to tune you. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, no, maybe it's the way I look. So I would wear these suits. And then I was like, I need a picture of a bulldog because I need to have my face looking like such a serious person, you know, like Margaret Thatcher. I need to channel that energy so that I can get away from being seen as a woman. Because I didn't want to be seen as a woman. I wanted to be seen as an equal. You know, I didn't want to be seen as a sex mm. symbol or a sex object. Yeah. I wanted to be seen for this. Yeah. And so I just used to buy all those suits with big jackets that reach here. And it didn't make a difference. I could have worn a sack. <laughs> the comments still kept coming. Yeah. And so at some point, I figured out, Carol, if you're going to do this, do it as you. Do it as a woman, you know. Um, and you, it, it doesn't matter because wh what you wear or don't wear, let me tell you, they have a way of, you know, I don't know if it's X-ray vision. Yeah. They can, you can wear a sack and, you know, they'll just still yeah. see you they'll and they'll still, be like, still see through you. they'll still, you know, they'll be like, so yeah. how about we go for coffee, you know? And I'm like, no, you know, dude, this is what we are here to do. Yeah. Yeah. So um, coming to that place where you accept that you're a woman, that you've got certain gifts, that you've got a certain personality, understanding who you are, yeah. whatever it is you're doing, whatever business you're running or whichever industry you're playing in, just understand who you are and play like yourself. I'm so grateful for that Cheza Kamawewe, mm -hmm. you know, uh, song, mm -hmm. um, because now people are beginning to say, yeah, stick to your lane, play like you and win like you, mm. you know. Don't try and do it like anybody else. Mm. You've got the gifts, mm. you've got the talents, mm. you've got everything that you deserve to be in that space. Mm. Um, so go there and play, and play your best game. So um, those are some of the things that helped me um, because then when you're not fighting who you are, it's very easy to be authentic and for people to resonate with your authenticity. Um, and for them to find inspiration because you're just being you. Mm.
but you're doing a good job mm -hmm. while you're being you. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's interesting when we started, we talked, we were talking about perfectionism. Yeah. Perfectionism for me, because I am a perfectionist, when you're in an industry like mine, you're looking at every single thing. You don't want the hair to look that way, the shoes to look that way. Yeah. So it was something, you know, being in that industry, it came very easy for me. But because of the products that we were putting out regularly, you have to pay attention to detail. True. And so we had to consistently look and critique ourselves, you know, regularly. Be the first one to call yourself out before other people call yourself out. You're not perfect, but be the first one to say, okay, where did I go wrong? How can I do this better? And do that consistently. What we use, there's a meeting we used to call the post-mortem meeting. Yeah. Now that sounds like a very bad meeting. Mm, meeting mm. but in the post-mortem meeting we would sit and we would analyze our processes we would analyze the content we were putting we would tear it apart and we would be ruthless and you, we needed that because we wanted to find out what did we do right and pat ourselves on the back for that and what did we do wrong and how do we then improve you know, going forward. And so I think some of those things were really um, part of the longevity, uh, assisted in the longevity of what, you know, I have done. So, so Cara, do you remember the first night when you finally had the True Love franchise under your name? You do remember? Yes. How did you feel? Ecstatic. Uh -huh. Ecstatic. I don't know that I could even sleep. Um, because it was a dream come true. It was everything. It was my passion, yeah. which was uh, media, content, writing. Mm. But also, I was an entrepreneur. Mm. Uh, my mother was an entrepreneur. And now mm. I was able to bring my passion and bring entrepreneurship into it. Mm. So it was ecstatic. It was like all the stars aligned. Mm. Oh, God, Jehovah has answered all my prayers, you know. So that was what that moment was, and it was surreal, mm -hmm. and it has always been surreal for me. Yeah. Um, I don't take it for granted that I've been able to follow my passion, um, and I've been able to run a business. I've been an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. It's tough being an entrepreneur, um, but I am grateful. I mean, there are times it's tough, it's painful, yeah. um, but... I am grateful for the opportunity mm. of having followed my dreams. Mm. How about the process? How did it take, what did it take for you to arrive at that moment now when you had uh, the True Love franchise and your name? True Love is originally from South, South Africa. Africa. Yes, yes, yes. Possibly could you just break it down for our viewers. What did it take? I think because tenacity. People think, yeah, yeah. I think you, you've got to have a huge amount of tenacity. Yeah. You've got to be like a dog with a bone, yeah? a dog with a bone like you're not letting this thing go mm. all right mm. because you know that you've got something to offer so for me it was just i didn't have the money <laughs> i wish i had the money i didn't have the money how did you end so up how many with people it? start a business with very little money uh -huh. the bulk oh. of people start a business with very little money okay mm. You need a great idea. You need a great idea. And you need people who believe in that idea. You need a market that needs that idea. Those are some of the things. So it's possible. It is possible. I didn't have the money. We had to look for money. We had to put in, I mean, I got into this space. It's, you know, just to get the first magazine out, you need millions of shillings. You don't need 10 shillings. Yeah. You need millions yeah. of shillings yeah. um, for, to produce your first issue. Yeah. Where are you getting that money from? Yeah. So, I mean, we went into our, our coffers. We, you know, removed every single coin that you could think on yeah. about yeah. and put it in there. Yeah. Um, we also had a lot of goodwill in the market. A lot of people who were willing to say, okay, we will bank on this. Yeah. You know, we will uh, offer these services and you can pay us later. We had amazing, amazing, amazing. One of the things I've enjoyed up until today yeah. is goodwill in the market. Mm. People who have really just believed in my dream and who've always been supportive uh, of what I'm doing. I have enjoyed, I've worked, I've lived on 
a lot of God's favor and the goodwill of people. And then we had a market. We had women who wanted this product. And the moment we said we are, we are back uh, and the new management, they were in the supermarkets buying the magazine off the shelves like crazy. Mm. We had all of that. Mm. So we had a fantastic recipe. Mm. But, you know, five steps before that, mm. it's really, you've got to have that tenacity, that belief. When nobody else believes, mm. you've got to believe. Right now, I'm in the process of something new. Mm. And I still have that tenacity. Mm. I've had to refire it mm. and tell myself, you have to believe, you have to, you have to go down with this thing. You have to be on this ship. But you've got to believe and you've got to see it to the end. Mm. And it will cost you everything. But you put skin in the game. Mm. So I put skin in the game. I put my money where my mouth was. I put everything I had. I risked it then. And I continued to risk it over and over. When COVID happened in 2020, 2020 yeah. the very first thing that happened was we um, advertisers, everybody took a hold and said, we you know, just hold on advertising spend. Our business model is advertising driven. So the first thing, so, so I had a team, I had teams. Mm -hmm. um, I had office space to pay, mm -hmm. rent to pay. I had all of those overheads and no money coming in. And I did what i done in 2010. I took money, much of it was my kids' school fees and all of that, and I used that money to finance my business. There was no money coming in. It was tough, but that's what it means, skin in the game. Yeah. You've got to have skin in the yeah. game. Sometimes I keep saying to myself, it was a stupid decision mm. because I've still not recovered that money. <laughs> <laughs> it's not there. Yeah. It went. It went, it went yeah. and it went. Mm. Um, but that's the cost of the dream. That was the cost of the dream. And I know it's not just something I, it's not something I went through as a businesswoman. A lot of entrepreneurs went through it. Uh, a lot of big businesses went through it. So... You know, people just, you know, figuring out, okay, do I sell my car? Do I sell my house? What do I sell to keep my business going? And that's, that was the journey. And that's been the journey of a lot of entrepreneurs, especially post-2020. It's been a rocky, bumpy ride. Mm. But what keeps them there? What makes them wake up tomorrow and go back? It's that dream. And like I said, you need to be like a dog with a bone. One day it turns around. Yeah. Um, but initially, you just stick with it. You really stick with it. Yeah. Well, this is Her Standards and my name is Queen Tambori. Thank you for keeping it here every Saturday. This is the show where we give you direct connection to women you need to know. And today we are privileged, extremely privileged to be in the company of a leading woman in the media industry. I am talking about none other than Carol Mandy, who is the CEO the founder of Carol Mandy Media and the publisher of, I know you know True Love, of course, she's the publisher of Drum and Home, home Living. Home and Living. We want to take a short break, of course, pay some bills. Um, when we get back, there's still so much that we need to talk about. Special shout out to our hosts who are Tamarind Tree Hotel um, along Langata Road. Remember, you can always log on to their social media platforms to get in touch with the kind of services that they offer. We'll be right back.
uh, we are glad you could join us again for this second part of her standards. This is the show where we connect you to women you need to know on this particular episode. We are thrilled to be in the company of one such woman who is a leading personality in the world of media and also she's a media owner, one of the few in Kenya. We only have about 8.1% of them. So we are very lucky to have her on the show sharing you know, her journey, the tips that she's managed to uphold in order to stay afloat in this very, very challenging industry. Remember, we are available uh, on socials at KTN Home. You can also hit me up at Quintambori on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I believe I have been trying my level best to respond to each and every one of you. But if I haven't, usijali. I will talk to you, I will reach out, I will respond, I will be able to get, give you the kind of feedback that you are expecting. Without much ado, let me welcome Carol to the second part of the show. Karibu, Carol. Asante sana. Um, yes. This feels like, uh, what would I call it? You're in the media and now you're being interviewed. You're on the other side yes, of... Yes, <laughs> How yes. How does that feel for you? Uh, very strange. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, uh, but I'm used to it. You know, I tell people, mm. I don't interview well. Yes. <laughs> You don't. I no, don't. you do actually. You think? Yes. Um, you maybe do. I'm just being. Uh, I'm a, a, harsh, being a harsh critic on myself. I always yes. feel like I don't interview well. Yes. Because uh, when I'm when I'm seated on that side of yes. the of of of, of uh, being interviewed on the interview panel, yeah. Sometimes I feel like I should have. I, f I beat myself. Yes. Like maybe I should have responded this way. Yeah. Or I should edit have yourself. Exactly. You're always editing yourself I do because that that's a lot. because that's media. But do you know what the beauty about the digital space yeah. now? Yeah. yeah. Is that just think about it? Somebody with a phone yeah. goes and says whatever they are saying. <laughs> their face is looking the way they are looking. Like I woke up looking like this, and then they hit a million hits, two million hits. So I think sometimes we are very hard on, on ourselves mm. being in the media because you want things to be so perfect, mm. and people want that authenticity. They want that. Um. 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 What? What? You know. They want the. What am I saying? What am I, they want that. Yeah. They really, and they resonate with that. Yeah. yeah. You know, interesting you should raise that because during the, we just had elections in Kenya and yes. one of the people who were trending was a gentleman who did not have an opinion. Yes. He was asked, what do you think about this? It yes. became a hit. Yes, yes, it's yes. Very interesting times we are in, yeah, right? Very interesting. Yeah. And very exciting in terms of <laughs> the amount of media, the proliferation yeah. of content yeah. and the fact that everybody is a content producer even your grandmother <laughs> can be a content producer seriously yeah you know she can sit in the village and say and that becomes content Imagine. you know <laughs> that becomes content and she becomes famous mm. yeah what does it mean for for you or for those in the in the in the industry in the industry in the particularly magazine publishing industry what yeah. does it mean I think the one thing it means is that um, we, we, we need to recognize our space. Okay. And our space in media can never be taken over by anybody else. Because mm. we went to school to do this. Oh, please, you, yes, okay? yes. You know, so, I mean, a doctor is a doctor because he studied medicine. Um, we went to school to do this. So there's a lot of things that are beneath the surface that make a good... A magazine or a good TV show that we have studied and I think it, we need to as media owners as content producers yeah. in media recognize who we are first and foremost is that you have the legitimacy you you studied for this but secondly to understand that one of the things that's very important is credibility mm -hmm. and truth more than ever in a world where every single person can be a journalist, there's need now more than ever for the truth. Today, if you go online and you Google your symptoms, yeah. uh, whatever symptoms you have, yeah. um, you will get, a, you know, maybe a million responses <laughs> in terms of uh, Google will just yeah. give you all these answers. <laughs> They're not credible. Maybe there's a grain of truth in yeah. many of them. Yeah. At the end of the day, you still need to see the doctor if you really want to get well. So that's what we are. We, we, we do the fact finding. We do the research. We, before we tell you that if you dye your hair with the, this product, someone can come and say, dye your hair with this product yeah. and your hair falls off yeah. tomorrow, right? True. 
but we will do the research. We will speak to the experts. That's what we are. That's where we are. We're credible. We will find the truth in a world where fake news is on the increase. It's important that people know what the truth is, and that's the strength of what we do is that we give the truth. Mm. We will give you bio, uh, balanced opinions, yeah. don't be biased. Yeah. yeah, so I think it's, it's, it's opened the space, mm. but more than ever, mm. it shows us who we are mm. as uh, media professionals yeah. and why what we do matters mm. more than ever. Yeah. People need to know what the truth is. Mm. Credible, verifiable, yes. <laughs> factual, balanced. balanced. Yeah. yeah, so that, that's actually what makes us stand out. I, I really wish we had some form of partnership with this tech, uh, the tech companies so we conduct some form of media literacy because there's a lot of you know uh, misinformation, disinformation flying around. Yes. And you know it impacts the society in one way or the other. Yes. You know, it's, it is this space that has become so competitive such that we, ha we in the media, we women in the media, we have been accused of being overly sexual. What do you think about that? That maybe because the space is becoming narrower and we're trying to remain relevant, now we really have to push, you know, the buttons, push the envelope. What do you think about that? Um, it's very interesting. I've got very many views on it. <laughs> um, one that yeah. being the, that, you know, I think we started putting out a lot of uh, women in media on yeah. the covers of our magazines. Yes. And we were portraying them, you know, in their best light, I like to say, looking beautiful, and he, and in, skin tight, in skin tight picture. dresses, yeah. you know, because that's what the magazine was all about. It was yeah. about their aspiration. Yes. Um, but then now that began to be seen also As. on the screen. Um, and I think it was just a reflection of where the industry was going. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, in a, in a country where the population is very young, mm -hmm. over 70% is below the age of 35, mm -hmm. yes. they were not interested in politics the way our parents were interested in politics. Mm -hmm. So now when people were tuning in to, to see whoever was reading the news, they wanted to see a beautiful face or a handsome man mm -hmm. reading the news. Yeah. And so, you know, to be able to get those eyeballs mm. in a world where there were so many TV stations yeah. and all of that, mm. it, you know, it just, it just increased. Mm. Um, I think that you should always, that it, women in media should be allowed to be themselves. Mm. However, I think that sometimes mm. we push the bound, we push the envelope mm. in terms of are we, do I want to be seen as, um, as an expert or do I want to just be seen as a, a good-looking woman? And I think we must still strive to look good, but always know that the end game and the goal must be that I am here because of what I know, mm. and I'm here offering a service to the people. And so it's less about me, whereas I should look presentable, I should, look, I should be comfortable in what I'm wearing, yeah and all of that, okay. but it's really about the content that I'm giving, mm. I, and especially in mm. the media space. Mm. If you're an influencer, then of course you can go and... and do sometimes yeah. go overboard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. And uh, th there's one thing that, um, that comes to mind when it comes to uh, being a woman in the media, and if you allow me, I can, I'll, I'll just shift the gears a bit yes. now to maybe uh, to a bit of your private life, mm. because one thing that people need to understand is the fact that but we are in the media doesn't mean that our life stops. Yes. Yeah, we have lives, we have families, we have work, some of us have spouses, some of us have children. So um, one of the things that keeps popping up is the fact that juggling that relationship between, you know, life, the, 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 the work, life, family and all, given the nature of our work also, because we can do long hours yes. away from family. Yes. Uh, having been there, done it and got a t-shirt yeah what do you th what what is there a working formula is it possible to even balance is it possible to integrate these aspects of our lives and still remain at the top yeah because you're here yeah yeah i think you must find a way to balance yeah. but balance isn't i spend 50 percent of my time at work if i spend eight hours at work i spend eight hours at home mm -hmm. that's not balance balance is do i show up fully in all those areas of my life, okay? Mm. When I'm at work, do I show up fully at work? 
when I'm at home, am I fully at home? It's hard to, um, to do it, especially in an industry like media that is very, let me tell you, it sucks everything out of yes, you. It does. Because you constantly, especially if you're doing news, yeah. you're constantly following, yesterday's news is yesterday's news. It's gone. Today, you're on, you have to be on top yeah. of what's happening yeah. today. And sometimes the news, they call it developing stories, mm -hmm. changes on the hour. And that needs your full concentration True. True. and attention. Yeah. And you've got a three-year-old at home, mm. okay? Um, you've got a partner yeah. who also wants his wife to show up 100%. Yeah. It is hard when you're in a very intensive uh, profession like this. And, and I think that's why you see that for a lot of women in media, they struggle. They struggle, yeah. you, know, you know, whether it's with their family life yeah. because of just that intensity. Yeah. But I feel that one way for us to manage it is to be in every space and to show up fully in that space. Mm. Not equal time, but equal intensity, equal show up at home and be 100% at home. I'm saying this because I made all the mistakes. Mm. I would give my job. I love work. I hate the idea of retirement. Because I, I want to work until I'm like 95 <laughs> and drop dead. Like right? the queen. <laughs> yeah, I really do, you know. Mm -hmm. um, however, I'm saying this because I was so consumed by work that sometimes I was not present and my kids were growing mm -hmm. without me there. They were, I was not attending their school functions because I was more focused on growing my career. So I made all of those mistakes and I'm grateful that they have the grace mm. to forgive me. Oh. Sometimes we have those conversations and they say, Mom, you know what, we understand oh. you had to do what you had to do. Yeah. Um, but I look back and I ask myself, could I have done it differently? Yeah. Uh, maybe I could have. Yeah. Um, and the differently that I've come to is that I could have shown up, I could have negotiated. Women are not very good at negotiating. I could have negotiated better, which is, I will be at work yeah. five days, six days a week yeah. if you need me. Yeah. But my daughter's sports day is once a term. Yeah. I need one day off. I could have negotiated better with my employers. Mm. I could have planned myself better because I think half of it is also your planning. Yeah. I could have planned my time better. Mm -hmm. It's about managing your time. And mm. I didn't manage my time. Mm. And so that's where balance comes in. It's not in we'll never have it 100% mm -hmm. of the time. Mm -hmm. I wanted to cook for my family. It was very important to me, mm -hmm. still is. Mm -hmm. um, and there were times I would be like, okay, I can only cook once a week. Maybe it's Sunday or it's whatever, but do that once a week. Do that one thing that you can do. Um, don't, you know, give, don't, don't, don't just be like, oh, too much. Mm. My, my work is it. Because work is not everything. <laughs> you can be replaced at work. True. You will never be replaced in your family. True. You will never be replaced with your children. Mm. They will only have one mother. You understand? Mm. So you, you also have to balance that, um, even as you're pursuing your career. You have to balance it. You can't be unhealthy. You need, to, you need the energy. You know, your children need you to yeah. have energy. Yeah. Your job needs you to have energy. Yeah. So being able to balance all those aspects of your life yeah. becomes important, which is being able to show up mm. fully in those different spheres of your life. Mm. So when you're at the office, be at the office. When you're home, be at home. Be at home. Fully. When you're at the gym, mm. be at the gym. Mm. Okay. When you're with your girlfriends, mm. be with your girlfriends. Mm. Okay. Mm. Show up 100% where you are, be present. That's one of the things I have learned. And it, ma it, it makes a difference because, um, you know, when it comes to your children, they will remember. When they remember, they say, but mom, you know what? You may have missed sports day, but you know, we used to love it when you would come home and pray with me every day before I go to sleep. Five minutes in the bed, you pray, makes a world, they still remember. So just show up fully where you can mm. and be where you are. Mm. Don't be at work and at home. Mm. Be where you are. Mm. But you will never have 100%. Mm. And yes, if you're going to, as a woman, pursue your career, sometimes it will seem like you're sacrificing your family. But that's where, again, negotiation comes in. 
have that conversation with your partner, have that conversation with your children. I used to say to my kids when we're on deadline, I used to tell them, guys, you won't see me this week because I'll be coming home when you're asleep yeah. and you, you will, you, yes, mm -hmm. you will not see me. But I promise you, once I'm done with this week, next week I will spend more time. Now, more time can just mean I'll take you, I'll come home and we'll go buy ice cream. And that's it. And we'll sit and take our ice cream and that's it. But it's, it was just about that. It was about juggling and, and just helping them to understand life is not perfect, but I am doing the best I can. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Mm -hmm. Wow, you yeah. <laughs> should end the show right there. <laughs> but no, we still have a few minutes to go. 20 years in business yeah. is, not, um, is not a mean feat. Yeah. 20 years is, is quite a long time. And you've, been through, you've seen it through you know, the analog era, and now we are digital. So what does uh, Carol Mandy Media look like currently and of course in the next coming years? It is a completely <laughs> different business. Yeah. Um, I think 2020, we knew oh. that the, and we'd known from about 2015, we began to see the signs, the writing was on the wall um, of the digital age. Yeah. Um, and so we knew we needed to make a shift. We didn't know what that shift was. And 2020 showed us this is what the shift yeah. was. The shift was your phone. Yeah. Um, everything you needed to do, you were doing on your phone. Yeah. And that was now complete by March 2020. And that was, so you know, like I said, it was, it threw my business off, you know, like I said. Yeah. And those were really difficult times financially to mm -hmm. keep the business going yeah. financially. Mm -hmm. It was just terrible. Mm -hmm. However, then we realized that you can be sitting in your house uh, in your bedroom, producing content, and here I am, sitting in an office somewhere, paying electricity, mm. paying rent, mm. paying salaries, paying whatever, and you know, not getting the revenue mm. to keep this business mm. going. Mm. So we changed a lot of things. It was like we brought the whole entire thing to the ground. Everything that we knew, we had to throw it out. Because this was a new future. This is a new future. And the rules are being written yeah. as we go along. Mm. And it's changing. Technology changes. Mm -hmm. Like one year is, is like 100 years mm -hmm. in technology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, being able to change with that technology. So that's where we had to go. We had to, you know, and coming from a place of traditional media yeah. to new media was the hardest thing ever because it also involved a mental yeah. shift. Okay. A mental shift when your revenues are not there. You're not making money. So, but then that's where we, you know, we looked at different things, you know, and different, because what we realized is we have the community. Yeah, yeah. We've got the fans. Yeah. We've got people who want to consume mm. the content. Mm. Now we just need to reach them using a different platform. And that's where it creates new opportunities. So opportunities that were... We, we were doing a lot more digital content, we were doing a lot more events, um, we were doing books. So we were going, we were moving away and we have been moving away from who we used to be five years ago. We no longer look like what we looked like five years ago. And I think, and it, the transformation is continuing yeah. for us, mm -hmm. for me, mm -hmm. as a business leader. Mm -hmm. um, but I do know that it's making me a better person. It's making me a better leader. And I can tell you for a fact, Quinta, it will not be, and I will not be the person I was a year ago. And the business will not look like what it looked like a year ago. Mm. So there have been a lot of changes um, that we have made in the last uh, two years. Yeah. And we continue to make those changes. Mm. Uh, we continue to evolve as an organization. We continue to evolve. Mm. Um, just recognizing that who we are, at the end of the day, is we are content creators, and we create that content, whether it's on phone, uh, it's, it's digital, or it's in a book, or whichever format that you require that content, or it's through an event, we will create content for our audiences, for our communities, and that's bottom line what we do. Mm -hmm.
largely your audiences, your more fans, they're women aged 24 to... 25 to 35. 25 to 35. 25 to 35. Uh -huh. um, yes, that's largely. But like I said, we've got so many different demographics. Yeah. And then we recently launched a, a program called A Woman in Her Prime. It's uh -huh. a coaching program. Uh -huh. And the reason we did that is because when I started off as True Love Editor in 2004, yeah. there were women who started with me, and there were very many, and who religiously bought the magazines year in, year out. But then they outgrew that demographic. They were now in their 40s yeah. and they were in their 50s. Yeah. And they kept complaining, oh, we don't like who you put on the cover. You know, why did you put so-and-so on the cover? You know, And I was like, because you're not the demographic. That's why you don't resonate with the person we put on the cover. She's 28, she's 32. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, she has very different values from you. So yes, I understand. You're 45 now. You know, you really honestly are not the true love demographic. And also, I'm not the true love demographic yeah. because I'm also no longer in that age group. So, and so they kept saying to me, but do something for us, do something, you know, and I was like, because they still want aspiration, they still want information, yeah. they still want entertainment, yes. and they still trust you, they still trust me, and I'm like, okay, so what do we do? So we had a lot of focus groups, and we met with a lot of women, and we said, okay, what are your needs? And so we came up with this program called A Woman in Her Prime, and it's really speaking to women over 40, uh, maybe even over 45 who are in the second half of their lives or going into the second half of their lives. Mm -hmm. These are women we don't see in media. No. Because sadly, you know, if you look at any TV advertisement, the girls are 24, 25, right? And so there's, they feel invisible. And we said, okay, no, you're actually not invisible. They've got the money. Yeah. They're the ones yes. who can buy yes. the cars. Yes. They're the ones who can buy the makeup. Yes. You know, they're the ones who can buy that drink. Sure. You know? And you've ignored them. And when they look at everything that's going on, they're not seeing themselves. <laughs> so we then created this program called A Woman in Her Prime. So we, we've created and curated different products meeting different demographics mm -hmm. as part of our evolution process. Mm -hmm. Wow, and in, in case you're wondering what the Woman in Her Prime is all about, we did a show about it the previous week and you can always catch up with that episode on our YouTube links. It's very, very exciting. We met these amazing women who are having, you know, transformative lives and you need to be part and parcel of that. Anyway, Carol, what in, what's next in store for you? No, before you tell us that, what keeps you grounded? How do you, because I've been following you ever since I can't remember Thank and you. you have not, you've not changed anyhow. Wow. And you still look the same, more beautiful, more glamorous, more confident. <laughs> Thank you. I want to know the secret. What do I need to drink? <laughs> water. Water. Living water. <laughs> what keeps me grounded? Yes. My faith. Um, my faith. I just believe in God and I believe that I have been given certain opportunities. Um, and I think all of us are given opportunities. Mm -hmm. So my faith, I come back to my faith mm -hmm. every day. Um, I always say I'm not a perfect Christian, but I'm a Christian who um, understands what grace is and forgiveness is. Mm -hmm. um, so my faith keeps me grounded um, because there's no difference between me and the other person who didn't achieve her dreams. Do you understand? Yeah. In terms of, yeah. we are both, they could be probably even more intelligent than I was, they could have been more hardworking than I was, and all of that. Yeah. But for me, I just say, you know, it is faith that has brought me here. Mm -hmm. So that keeps me grounded. The second thing that keeps me grounded is my children. Mm -hmm. Because your children are so unimpressed with you, and yet you want them to be impressed by you. But they're so unimpressed, and they see you like just this person. <laughs> who's making mistakes and who's doing whatever. And, and I'm like, okay. So um, my children keep me grounded because when I look into their eyes, they don't see an entrepreneur. They don't see uh, this woman who's uh, run a business for 20 years. Yeah. They don't see any of that. Yeah. They, don't, they see me without the wing yeah. on. That keeps me grounded. Yeah. And I look into their eyes and all I want them to know is that I love them. Yeah. And how do I communicate that? to them yeah. when they feel I'm not loving them. Mm -hmm. That keeps me grounded. Um, the third thing that keeps me grounded, of course, is I've got largely the same friends I had from my teenage years. 
So these are people who've seen me when I had zero. Wow. As one of, I say with one of my friends, remember when we were poor? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> These are people who see me poor, without food, without money, yeah. living in Kibera. These are those people. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, wearing mitumba? Yeah. These are those people. Oh. So now, what am I going to show them and, and be like, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. They'll be like, Carol, cut it. Please. Cut it, stop. <laughs> you know, you're, you're drinking too much of your own Kool-Aid. You know, so those people keep me grounded because mm. I don't have to pretend for them. Um, they know me, my, and my and strengths and yes, my weaknesses, yes. and they accept me and as I accept them. And yeah, so that's what keeps me centered. Mm. And I'm very grateful for oh, that. Wow. Yeah. Thank you, Carol. Thank you. I know. We have come to the end, sadly. Yes. Yeah. I have enjoyed this. Uh, me too. <laughs> <laughs> it felt like we should it felt like we were having coffee. Yes, yeah, true. Uh, true. Maybe next time, uh, producer Grace, you should give us coffee. Yes, you know? coffee. No, but thank you so much. Indeed. Thank yes. you so much. I think you are you're doing amazing things for this generation, for the past generation, for the coming generation. It's a, it's really amazing how some one person's belief in something can transform a whole a whole generation. It's good stuff. Thank you. I'm very grateful. Thank, thank you. Thank you for inspiring everyone, for inspiring me. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, also thank you for uh, honoring us with your presence on the show. It was my absolute pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. We should do this again. Yes, let's do it. All right. <laughs> now, un un unfortunately, uh, my dear viewer, we have to come to the end of uh, today's episode. We were in the company of Carol Mandy, who is the CEO and founder of Carol Mandy Media, which publishes True Love, Drum, and Home and Living. She's also reinvented, and now uh, Carol Mandy Media hosts events, and they're writing books, and there's so much that you need to keep up with, which will be available on their social media platforms. Remember, if you have any comments, any question for her, you can reach her on Facebook and Twitter. Instagram. Instagram, at Carol Mandy. But you can also hit us up across all our socials at KTN Home. I'm also available as Quintambori on the same platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Alternatively, you can get in touch with our producer. She's called Grace Romeo. Unfortunately, we have to end this right now. But you can keep up with her standards and all our past interviews available now on our YouTube channels. All you need to do is just get a little um, bundles and log on to our, our, our platforms and be inspired. Well, till next time, it's a big thank you to you for keeping it here. Uh, the crew behind the cameras, you cannot see them, but they're doing amazing stuff. And of course, our hosts for today who are Tamarind Tree Hotel. Till next time, it's bye-bye for now.